In this video we'll see international medalists hit some big 90% plus lifts. But what we really ought to notice and watch out for is the training environment that Team Korea are able to manifest every single session. Unlike a lot of other countries, the South Koreans feel united in a way that most others don't. Their camaraderie was, at this World Championships at least, and accented by the distinct lack of Team China, the most obvious. Team Georgia often comes to mind when you think of the word unified as a team, but to some degree it is centred around one athlete, the strongest athlete of all time, Lasha Tanakadze. Other teams come across as generally being made up of individuals who above all care for their own success. And there's no problem with that at all, it's human instinct to do so. But what makes the South Korean team stand out all the more Regardless of who it is, whether it's world silver medalist Jin Jin Song, now world champion Sung Young Hee, or a lifter who stands little chance of meddling, the whole team bands around in support of one another. The athlete in question will approach the barbell and yell, and the rest of the team, they take notice. The closest to the action stop and yell, and those further out make an effort to make some noise of encouragement. This training session was Jin Yin Song's heaviest. Silver medalist as a 102 at the 2019 World Championships, and again, silver medalist here. He is certainly one of their best. And he worked up to the high 90% range in the snatch, and kind of right on 90% for the clean and jerk. Almost always, as is his thing, powering the first of every snatch. We also got to see Yu Dong Zhu go pretty heavy in both lifts. And just a few days later, he would be crowned world champion adding to the extensive pile of rapidly accruing medals brought home by Team South Korea. Sun Young Hee, on the final day of the championships, beat out all other supers to become the world champion in the plus 87 kilo category, and she did it with perfection, a beautiful synergy of strength and technique. In fact, her coach said to us about a week before her session that we were filming the new 2021 world champion. He was just so convinced of it. Park Min Kyung medalled in the total in the women's 64s despite no individual lift medals, whereas her teammate and competitor in the same category, Han Ji Yan, medalled in the snatch but not the total. Kim Woo Jai shocked us all in the 81s with a sneak bronze medal in the clean and jerk in a world record setting session where he hit 196 kilos. Lee Min Ji won two golds in the clean and jerk and the total with 139 and 244 kilos two spots above Kim Soo Hyun who made 134 in the jerk. Kim Mi Sul grabbed two more medals for the team in the women's 81s. And in a prior session with the lighter lifters we saw athletes like Jeong Hang Sol who would go on to grab a bronze medal in the clean and jerk. There was also 61 kilo Shin Rok who would go on to take the gold medal, perfectly beating out the Georgian Shota Mishvalidze by a kilo in both lifts. And Ham Yoon Ji snuck a medal in the 55s at 114 kilos. And that lighter training session is now up on the Patreon page, along with many other sessions from Worlds, with commentary of course. In total, Team South Korea grabbed 9 gold medals, 5 silver medals and 7 bronze medals. And in the total, they won 2 bronze medals, 1 silver medal and 4 gold medals. What's so impressive is their medal consistency across the whole board. On the men's side, out of seven competing athletes, five of them came home with at least one medal. More impressive were the eight women, seven of whom came back with a medal. So that's 12 out of 15 athletes winning medals. And if we actually just divide the total medal count between the 15 athletes, each of them would own 1.4 medals. But here's where it gets interesting. The South Korean team doesn't win medals because of their high percentage of makes, but actually the opposite. It's due to their aggressive attempt selection. Out of the 42 attempts from the men, only 19 were makes. That's 40%. The women were better, but again only marginally. 
Of their 48 attempts, they made just 24, 50%. So overall, out of the 90 team attempts, only 43 of them were made lifts, with 47 as misses. That's a make percentage of less than 48%. Out of those 43 made lifts, 21 medals were won. And of the 90 attempts taken, 23% of them won medals. And this shows just how aggressive the competition strategy of the whole thing is. This combatant style of attempt selection wins medals, but of course the downside is that it can cause bomb outs too. Out of the 15 athletes, 12 medals, 3 didn't, and 2 of those 3 didn't because they bombed out. The camaraderie of this team and the many coaches that they have is impressive, and it makes watching them lift, compete, miss and make that much more exciting and wholesome. The whole system outside of the programming seems to be based around the idea of encouragement. In training, they yell, and in competition, they have their own tactics too. On the competition day, the athletes warm up in the back room along with three coaches. After every single lift in the back room, not on the platform, but still in the back room, the three coaches all clap loudly. This signals to the other Koreans who are sitting at the side of the competition venue, close to the back room, that they too should clap despite regularly not being able to see what's actually happening backstage. And this creates a sort of separate chorus of applause for the somewhat isolated athlete in the back room. And there can be as many as 10 other athletes and coaches sat filming from the side of the venue, engaging in this encouraging practice. In fact, it was also the spot that I went to to film most of the sessions and they were normally the only other ones there, to the extent that we all acknowledge each other as playing a somewhat vital role in the whole weightlifting production. As the athlete then went out to lift on the platform, the Koreans would make as much noise as possible from the side of the stands, as well as down by the side of the platform. In fact, we enjoyed filming the Koreans so much that we created a couple of t-shirts to show our support, and their country motto, to broadly benefit the human world, we've added in Korean to that t-shirt too. I'll drop a link below for you all along with the Patreon video. How much this clapping and yelling helped with the performance of the athletes is impossible to know, but it surely played a part. The South Korean team in their masses left no stone unturned, and in this competition where China did not show, they took their chances and went for gold. 15 athletes, 21 medals, champions of the 2021 Weightlifting World Championships, beating out the home team favourite of Uzbekistan. Now while we round out this episode, I just want to talk about something that we have been planning for a long time. A secret project, something that is genuinely going to change the sport of weightlifting forever. I can't provide much more detail than that publicly, but we are going to be drip feeding information over the coming weeks for you all. If you want to find out more sooner, then you just need to add your email address to the link down below. It's weightliftinghouse.com forward slash secret, and we'll make sure that you are the first to know how we're going to be changing weightlifting forever. Also, please like and subscribe. We are trying to hit 60,000 subscribers on YouTube as soon as possible. We'll catch you all next time.
Seriously.